So for this, we're going to take a look at a couple of different standing poses. Um, the first thing that you're going to do in any quick sketch is to establish a framework. And I do that with a minimum number of lines, maybe like 10 lines. You're going to look for the head, the center line, and the weight-bearing leg primarily. Um, most people use the opposing tilt of the shoulders and the pelvis as indicators both of where the shoulders go and where the pelvis go and to help with the motion. Um, after that, um, you'll go in and put in the sort of framework for the remaining limbs and then you'll start seeking forms. When I look for forms, I like to look for corners, um, especially if the figure has features or is in a pose that indicates those corners or they appear more blocky. Um, you may use cylinders or other types of forms to emphasize that. And you can go around and sort of place tick marks where certain things are going to go. And remember when you're using a reference that it's just a reference and that you can make changes and exaggerate and simplify as necessary. So when you go in with the forms, you need to stick with what you know. Um, right now, you probably know how to draw boxes, cones, cylinders, spheres. So stick to those. And as you do cylinders and, and boxes, be sure to use cross contour lines so that you can be clear as the form progresses what direction it's going. Um, I like to think of it as if there's clothing, I'll use that. And if there's not at the at the top and bottom of each form on either side of the joint, I'll place a cross contour line so I can tell if the joint's bending, um, how that is changing directions. And then I noticed that I made a couple of mistakes on here. So I had I like to do do-overs all the time. Sometimes I'll do them right back to back like this. Other times I'll revisit the pose after about 15 minutes, um, do a couple other ones and, and come back to it. Sometimes you'll even want to do that, you know, months later. The first correction that I noticed was I needed to reverse the opposition of the tilt of the hips and um, shoulders. So I wanted to make sure that the, that the figure's right shoulder was popping up and that the weight bearing leg, that the hip was popping up on that side. So that helps oppose it. Um, and that's gonna give it a totally different motion and feel and attitude. So typically what you'll, what you'll look for is when the weight bearing leg um, is pretty clear and it's on one single leg, that hip is gonna be higher than the other hip. The, the, when the weight's off of it, the hip's gonna drop. Um, that's not always the case, um, because there are certain poses you can consciously take to, to subvert that, but usually that's what you'll find. Um, when you get to small forms like hands, keep it very simple. I like to basically block the, um, the major metacarpals before you get to the knuckles all as one, and then block the fingers as one, and do like a little line for the thumb to indicate that. With closed figures, you have this, uh, closed figures, you have this great opportunity to use the clothing to help emphasize what you need to emphasize. So you have lines to wrap around the socks, you got shoes um, to help the form become more blocky, you have shorts in this case that help you emphasize the, the contour and the cylindrical um, part of the leg. And here I'm moving the feet um, A differently than I did in the first attempt and B differently than the reference so that I can make it a little more clear how that feet's going and it's exaggerating the pose a lot more crossing the crossing the leg a lot more um, it's as if I'm kind of turning the figure slightly so I think that's increasing the attitude and emphasizing what the tilt of the hips and shoulders are doing but then I came up and I did a really bad head and really bad tick marks for the facial features and it just kept getting worse the more I worked on it and I think that's really common I do that all the time everyone does it you're going to do it, um, and there's always going to be some kind of mistake that you make. So you don't have to redo the entire figure just to mess with that. Um, I like to, if there's a certain unclear section, come back and redo it um, and just do that one little part. Um, it's no big deal to kind of try that. And if you're going for a finished drawing in the end, um, and these are just your, your sort of studies before you go for the, like the real deal. It's good to do this and kind of work it out. You can also like blow that up, like increase the scale of it so you can get into some detail. 
um, you know, since your head here is like three quarters of an inch tall, um, you only have so much that you can do. Um, you know, if you're doing a full portrait that's like the, where the head is like 10 inches tall, you have a lot more landmarks you can hit. But here you got to keep it simple. Um, so I'm much more satisfied with that. And um, it kind of hits most of the proportions. So we're going to do this again, um, the different pose. Um, and again, you're going to follow the same steps. You start with the framework. Um, just think of head, line down the center, um, opposing tilt, weight bearing leg, and then the remaining limbs. Um, here I'm putting in the rib cage and the pelvis a little bit more directly. And remember when you do this, you have to stay soft and light. Um, you know, I know it's a little bit hard to see in some of the demos sometimes um, because the lines are so soft, but you're going to come back on top of it with the forms in your second stage. And you want to save room for that, basically. Um, when I do these forms, I look for overlap. So here on the right side of the figure, um, you'll notice some stretch because the spine is like curved. And then on the other side, you'll see compression. So that t-shirt um, indicates that compression, the way that the fold goes. So I picked up on that to indicate that. And then um, I went for a lot of extra attitude in the pose. I wanted to really exaggerate that curve because when you establish that attitude, it becomes clear. Um, if you're too subtle about it and you straighten things up too much, you lose that essence of the pose that you're trying to get across and what probably brought you to that pose in the first place or, or made you choose that reference in the first place. Um, so there's certain types of exaggerations that I think are welcome. Um, then um, when you go into the facial features, I think of them as tick marks and they tend to work pretty well. Just a tick mark for the eyes, nose, mouth, um, and eyebrows indicate where the ear is, maybe indicate where the jaw is if you have time. Um, but keep it simple and, uh, and, and small because you don't have a lot of room to work with. Like you can only draw lines that are so thin and if they're off at all, you know, one sixteenth of an inch matters on, on a three quarter inch drawing. Um, after this, you're going to work into characteristic details about the figure and that you want to address. Um, you know, depending on where you're going to go with this, whether it's like fine art, super photo real stuff, that'll kind of change. Um, so the characteristics that I wanted to get across were kind of the hair, the overall attitude, the pose, the motion of the fabric, you know, because it seems to be really windy and the scarf's going everywhere. Um, and then when you do a contour of a scarf, you know, be sure to break up the contours so that it's not just these sort of flat things that you get a little bit of dimensions of the folds and you get overlap with the scarf and the jacket and everything. And here I was kind of, I moved the scarf a little bit just to be sure that I could see both of the hands. Um, because if you cover that up, you're kind of just hiding some, something that's a good opportunity. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I drew that jacket in and the jackets overlapping that leg, even though I drew the leg first. Um, and that's why I kept that leg kind of soft. And then here, I wanted to be sure to get that um, the jacket through the gap in the legs. Um, if you leave that out, it's going to look look weird in this straight in this subtle way, and you're not even really going to notice it. Um, but it'll just sort of bug you. So pay attention to things like that, those minor overlapping details. And remember, as you do this, that this is just a sketch. You're learning, you're trying things out. Um, so don't put any weight on any one sketch. Just do a sketch, you know redo it if you need to and then just move on um it's not really a big deal you know i don't want to i don't want you to put a lot of stock into any one thing especially as you're learning um, but that continues as you grow and develop as an artist 